switch to English. ערב טוב לכולם ולכולן, קהילת באר שבע מאוד שמחה לארח את החוקרים המכובדים שהגיעו לכבד אותנו בנוכחות שלהם כאן. זה אירוע מאוד גדול, הקהילה מאוד מתרגשת ומאוד מעריכה את ההשקעה של החוקרים בכל העניין שהיה עד היום. אני בסופו של דבר מדווח להם על כל ההתפתחויות המדהימות שהייתי איתכם במים האחרונים לגבי המחקרים, אבל זה דבר שהוא מאוד יבוא. ומעכשיו אני אעבור לעניין, ברשותכם, כי החוקרים רובם לא יודעים עברית, והם לפחות לא נעשו את הסביבה, הם באים לעניין. So again, I will switch to to English. The Karai Jewish community in Be'er Sheva is welcome you. You are very welcome. We are really appreciate and honor to have you here with us. I hope now that after you saw a prayer, all right. Prayer, evening prayer, you have much more uh, uh, accurate uh, view regarding to what is practice. And I'm sure you have much more questions that I can give uh, by plain uh, uh, explanation. So I'll be glad first to answer your questions and to include inside my answer to the general topics regarding to say what I have to say. I don't think that I need to that we need a mic, but if someone wish to, I can, um, yeah. like, okay? So I'm for oil questions, please. Mm -hmm. I wish to share the, ah, in English, in Hebrew? Sorry, in English, I can do both. In order that all of us will understand. In English. English. Yes, it's better. It's better. Okay, uh, we are here in the Middle East and all that. Now, let's say I go to Poland, I go to America, I go to Europe. Is there such a thing as prayers according to the Ashkenaz and prayer according to the Sephardic, or are they all one and the same? <coughs> all the prayers are all the, you mean about the prayer book or whatever? The whole okay. prayer at, at least for the Karite in Turkey and, uh, and Karite in uh, America, which most of all the Karite which came to America came from Egypt. So they are really relatives of for those people who are sitting right around here. us here. So uh, the prayer, the synagogue looks the same and the prayer is the same. The only difference that exists is that the prayer is a little bit shorter because the Hebrew is less and less uh, used and the modern uh, uh, youngest in the community are uh, almost fully Americans. They speak English rather than Hebrew and only a few of them know uh, to conduct the prayer. Mm. So uh, they have a special book which is based on the prayer, which is on the left side is English and the right side is Hebrew, and this is the way they are uh, practicing the Hebrew. But from the concepts of prayer, they are doing the same, exactly. In Europe, I know that uh, they are almost praying the same. Maybe there are parts of the prayer that they are involving a local language, because again, the local community doesn't control Hebrew as in Israel, which is obviously understood. But generally, there are no difference like Ashkenazi and, and, and Yemenite or uh, Sephardic prayer. Okay? Another question, if I may. Are there Karai, well, Karaitic uh, songs and chants? in the temple. Do they chant in the temple or is it always reading from the book? Speak about the prayer itself? Yes. Or on holidays? Uh, yes. On the on the weekday prayer which is it is less uh, have, let's say let's declare it songly or Music. musically. But on the Shabbat and uh, holidays they are, uh, it's much more involved uh, parts which of course 95, of, 95 of, the of the prayer is built from the Bible. So there are parts which are uh, songs, are, are much more melodic than melodic. To, yes. today in, in the prayer. Okay? Okay. But uh, this is you need to present in order to, to have it. Yes. Good. I would like to know what's your attitude towards building a new temple in Yerushalayim. <coughs> 
And uh, would you join uh, a rabbinite uh, temple if it were built? First of all, this is a huge question, yes? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Generally, I will give a little uh, decisions, use decisions like this, uh, and like any big decisions in the current community, are uh, used not to take by a person, one, one individual. There is cohesion of sages, which is Moetzet Chachamim, which is combined from all the rabbi, local rabbis or Chachamim from each community. Mm -hmm. And when a huge topic like this, uh, this is rising up, we are making a, a few uh, days of discussions regarding to what our views uh, to build a temple. Did you ever discuss this topic? No, never, we never had discussion regarding to building a temple. Uh, but uh, this is a very interesting <laughs> issue. I have to say. Uh, Wait, I heard you moaning on the building, the Hobada Bible, yes. in, in, uh, in this service. And so Every service. <laughs> Every service. Yes. Even Shabbat. Even right. Shabbat, yes. It's it's not for Shabbat. I can, I can say that uh, the, 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 the prayer in Shabbat, the used one, even those we are praying here in Bershaw, which is the longest one from all the areas that exist in, in the Karai, uh, is much more shorter and includes less parts of the morning. If you will read all the prayer like it's supposed to be, you will need to have a six hour prayer uh, to pray all the parts that include all the morning on Jerusalem and, and whatever it was. So uh, I think that from the moment the, the community came from, the majority of them came from Egypt to here, uh, those parts were taken off. Even though they exist in the book, what we are jumping in the book prayer, uh, because as I see it in other Chachamzi uh, Tekun Bisrit, it's the start of the salvation. <coughs> the idea that we came here to Israel, all the Jewish from all the branches and the countries, is the start of the salvation, and we are <coughs> waiting for the Messiah, <laughs> as, as everyone else. Yes? Um, uh, as, there are a few number of families from Heat who yes. came in the 1950s there. Do they, do they come with a different kind of liturgy? Do they join you and do they have a liturgy of their own? Because I've never been able to establish what kind of liturgy they have when I worked with them a few years yes. ago. They are, part of the people who sit here are married with them. So they are husbands and, and wives of the pers persons who sit here with us in the community. So, I cannot tell that all of them are uh, active participants in the prayer in the community, but those who are, have a relationship, wedding, uh, relationship with us are intending to the prayers and uh, are part of us. But did they come when, in, the, in the 1950s? Did they yes. come with their own tradition? Of uh, no, as I know, they, they were uh, accepting the, the local uh, right. customs uh, of, of prayer. Hmm. Yes. You have your own suffering? <laughs> no. For our don't. sorrow, we don't have a special son. We have someone who writes Torah scroll. No, we don't have a Torah scroll writers, and we use, and we, when we want a Torah scroll, we buy it from every, every scribe Torah scroll who writes. Okay? So there are no basic differences in the text that would make. Uh, there's no difference between the current. No we are using the same Bible or the same course for the rabbinites use the same one. No, but Rav Moshe, you have special Torah scroll with the uh, Nikud and Teamim. Oh yes, this is very interesting. If you have mentioned it, in the community in the last years, we uh, after the discussions and, and the idea, we have started to those who want to do so. To, end, to, to accept Torah scrolls which have all the um, compilations and the dots inside. <coughs> this is completely against the rabbinite halacha, which says no, the Torah scroll must be without any signs and dots and something. Otherwise, he is uh, disqualified from being a Torah scroll, uh, and you cannot read it, you can use it as a humash and not as a Torah scroll. Uh, from my uh, reading and investigations, I, I found out that in one of the closest. Uh, Settlements uh, uh, here near Ofakim, there is a, a there is a I think Yamanite community that have a Torah scroll which is with the tape, with the signs, not with the dots, but with the sign, and the, it's acceptable in their community and they use it. 
So there are uh, other uh, signs that other communities as well use to have it and, and to use it in some way, way or another. But this is something new. I mean, in yes, it's new. We have in, Egypt, three. in Egypt, you would read a scroll without vowels. No, 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 no. In it's Egypt. Something which is new. Yes. Yeah. We have only three one in here, one in Ranem, which we will see. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, but again, uh, one in Ashdod. Yes. Is, it, is it because you believe that the Tamim and the Nikod are also given in, were yeah. given in Israel? Yeah. Yes, if you will open, if there are three sages, one of them that you mentioned by uh, now is uh, Yudad. See, he specifically uh, gets uh, to the idea that according to his opinion, in order that you can understand the Torah only in one way, not in 70 ways and difference, the Torah must have been given with all the signs and those, otherwise you can understand so it already like in a very different form. Yes, uh, Unfortunately, we didn't have a chance to see you reading the Torah, because it's not Shabbat. This yes. point. So I wonder, how do you interpret the, the trough? Is it this, in the same way as the Rabbinite Jews, or do you have a, a different interpretation of the trough? The Tami. You mean from the melody point of view or from the structure of splitting the sentence? The melody, uh, it's quite same or look like the Sephardic uh, uh, way of reading. Almost. There are a few tiny differences here and there, but generally if I would try to compare to other uh, things, that, uh, other branches, or it's, it's go to the Sephardic. How does that come down with the Egyptian Rabbanites? If you hear the Rabbanites from Egypt yes. and Rabbanites from um, Karaites from Egypt reading the Torah, would they sound different? To the matter of fact, I only visit a Rabbanite synagogue maybe two twice in my life. So I, I because I used to go to my synagogue, so I cannot give you a precise uh, answer. But from the recording that I heard, it's almost the same again. Like everything, it depends on the individual. In the individual, he can sing it, you know, higher, lower, better. He has nice voice, so, but generally, you can say it's quite the same. Generally, is it the same tune as we heard uh, tonight uh, in Tzvi Ashma? No, there is different uh, way to read. It's not the same. It's need to be in a way. I can. I have a few record, uh, record, audio records of reading in the, in the Torah. If someone is interested, I can give him a copy of it. And uh, he will. Uh, I heard. I heard put it on when, when I came into the synagogue, I heard a man reading the top of the the, 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 parasha, the parasha from the Chumash. Yes. And it sounded exactly like uh, like um, North African. Yes. Gen I said generally, it's like the Farsi exactly. branch. Yes. Is it always the same person who leads the prayer, or is it different people each time you pray? Like Hazan. the Chazan. Oh, the counters. Yeah. It could be anyone of, for, for, as long as he knows how to do so, and his view, of course, and all the religious, have all the things that he need to know. Uh, yes, we usually give it to a, in a weekday to one of the youngest ones in order to, you know, to train, train in order that he will be a, have all the idea how to pray on Shabbat, because Shabbat prayer is something which is between four hours to four and a half or five hours prayer. And in the, in the holidays, it could be even five, six hours. It depends, it's very long. So you need to be in, with a very strong voice and you can stand a lot of hours on your legs in order to, to be a cantor in a Kara synagogue. So this is, this is the way of the prayer. So there is not one, someone specifically. Here in the community, we have close to 10 uh, people that can switch between them that know how to do so. Uh, if I answer your question. Yeah, but on Shabbat, one person does all five hours, or do they yes, switch yes, in yes. the middle? On, only in Yom Kippurim, <laughs> uh, we use two uh, cantors, because it is all the day, from the morning to, to dawn, so, so there is no <laughs> way that they, so Even though I, I personally know people that are above the age of 70, they can do it alone. Yes. Hello, completely alone. That's crazy. <laughs> yes, when you are trained from age very, very low, so you can do it. Yes. I have two questions. Um, one is, 
about uh, wearing the talit. So you wear the talit even on uh, Yom Chol. Yes. In, in Tefillah. Yes. In all of the prayers. So whenever you pray, you wear the talit. Yes, supposedly. Morning and evening, we don't wear it. Yes. Okay. Holiday, Shabbat. And when, when women um, are in the period when they can't come into the, to the synagogue, do they have to, can they do prayers on their own at home, or do they just not pray? They can do it. First of all, the idea is that in order to distinguish between holiness and uh, unholiness, someone which is unpure and all the rules that you know from Latin to say, 15, should not come to the synagogue. Now, on your, in your home, it's not correlated to a woman or a man. Let's say a man is uh, impure from uh, the idea of a uh, dead man, okay? It says that his father or mother died in the home and he came and they passed away when he was. So the, the main custom or the original custom is to pray in the home of the descendants. The so it's, it's included the idea that if you're if not impure, you're obligated to pray, but you should not come to the city itself. If I answer. Yeah. The same, exactly the same prayer, but at home. Yes, exactly. Yes. yes. The women participate at all in the service? Yes. I mean, like leading. Again, I didn't answer the question. If the woman participates in the prayer, no. Can, can they take? Can they? Like I've seen in Yerushalayim that when they go around the room sometimes, and I've seen women. Yes, generally there is no. This is maybe this is one of the main differences between from the sociological idea between rabbinites and karat related to woman status. Woman's status is completely com equal to the man. She can go, she can give a witness, she is signing on the ketubah, like the groom, uh, she, we, we can, we can, uh, she can read in the Torah on Shabbat, they are passing the prayer that uh, people from the audience are reading to the congregation. So this, but if she knows how to do so, she can read from the upper uh, floor, of course, from the way she is. Standing, but she can read. There is no problem with the idea that a voice of a woman should not be mentioned in a synagogue or something like this. <coughs> there, is, there is nothing like this. Yes. I have two questions. One is about women. Uh, can women? Uh, can people get divorced without a get? Can a woman be divorced without a get? That's one question. And the other question is about uh, what do you do with regard to? The younger generation, how do you make sure that they learn the tradition? Do you have special uh, education? I will, I will say. Not like the Rabbanite way. According to the Karaite Halakha, when if a woman can prove to the Bedin that her husband doesn't fulfill all the three obligations, not one, all the three, okay, that at least one. Let's say that if he he is obligated to fulfill three. Shelter, food, and uh, counter-religion. If she can prove that because he is not getting along with her by purpose, he is not fulfilling one of the rules, usually what the Bedin is trying is called the couple try to do Shlom Bay, once, twice. But if the husband insists on the idea to not let his wife off, the Bedin can cut the deal between them and give her again. He doesn't need a specific, like the Rabbanite Halakha, specific form, specific handwriting, and all the rules that you are, I'm sure that you know. No, the Betin can cut it. And there is a book of, uh, that I found only in the last year that uh, wrote a, a rabbinic uh, rav. Uh, it's called Ziyad Laisha. And he goes back to the Talmud, and he, from the Talmud itself, brings the idea that the uh, bed thing can cut a, a wedding a obligation between them and, and, and do so. So this is not a car right, maybe a idea or new idea, but it's all mentioned in the time of, in the past. So your second question, what we are doing in order to keep the youngest uh, generation is that we have a 36 Torah lessons in a week in all the community. Which means here we have two Torah lessons on Monday to children, which is uh, to children and uh, adults, uh, children, sorry, and the youngest at the age of 15, something like this, and on Wednesday to the adults, which, of course, women and uh, females can participate wherever they want. There is no different groups or something like this. And uh, in each 
uh, look at each center of us. There are lessons like this, and we are, this is where we are uh, holding them and, and teaching them. Besides, we have uh, days that we are gathering them together and giving lectures and things like this. Of course, of holidays, of Purim, and uh, we have Shabbatot Iyun, which means we are gathering them on Shabbat in one of the centers, anytime uh, in, in different places. That's a, one is in Be'er Shem, one is in Be'er Shlod, one is in Yerushalayim. And they are giving lectures and questions and uh, f f get familiar one another with another. Summer camp was. What? Kaitana. Yes. So summer in, in the summer, of course, we have a specific activities for them, for different levels of children, but this is uh, only in the summer. <coughs> yes, of course. There, there, there are different there are, uh, cases like this. There are Karaites who are getting out from the community. If we speak about the idea of being under the same shelter and getting married with Rabbanites under the Rabbanut. Uh, and there are other cases which are uh, Rabbanites want to be a Karaite. And let's assume if the groom is from is a rab is a Karaite and his wife to the future is a Rabbanite and she accepts the way. So what we are doing is we are uh, giving her a period of learning the, with a Karaite rabbi to learn all the differences. And after she learned and understand it, she is fulfilling papers that says that I'm willing to accept the concepts and we are rushing to I wish to join to the community. And afterwards she's becoming part of the community and then you are going to her Karai wedding. Is there a kind of um, examination or just to make to make sure that she No it's, it's not examination we are because the current attitude is that, that the person is the individual is responsible to his own life mm -hmm. and his decision uh, my, my idea is not to make him a test or to examine his abilities <coughs> it is that he sits with a rabbi and the rabbi who teach her knows exactly what she knows and what she doesn't know so when he understands that she go to the level that she understands exactly what she needs to know and in order that she won't get to <coughs> Uh, things that she's obligated to do and then she said I didn't knew something like this he explained to her everything afterwards if she wished to be part of the community she declarated okay everything is fine from that moment this is under her responsibility if she will keep the rules or not we won't chase her oh this is very interesting point because in the Rabbanut you can find a wide spectrum of uh, answers. There are cases which I'm familiar with that say, oh no, you are not a Jew at all, you need to make a Jew for conversion. Okay? There are cases from the other side of the spectrum which says, there is no problem with you, just say that you are accepting the oral law and you are part of the us and you can go to a wedding. And between them, they are very widespread. There are those who say, oh, you need to pray. You need to uh, learn three months, uh, five months, six months. It depends on which rabbi you uh, have chosen. Yes. And I, and have, I have even uh, known a very unpolite case which the person uh, entered to the rabbi, uh, gave some some amount of money and after 10 seconds got out with the license that he's a pure rebel. So, so this is very unpleasant situation, but uh, I said there are a wide spectrum of options, but mainly mainly because the psika of the Rav Yosef, Yosef in the last years that I'm sure that you're familiar with, uh, that uh, wedding with Karite is acceptable, not like the Ashkenazi branch, which, is, which are not exactly in favor of, uh, this is much easier, and usually it's only you know a few meetings which you are learning the differences. When when he says I am accepting the oral law, and so he's joined to the rabbinite group, and then there is no problem to do so. The wedding is conducted. Yes. Why is there a separation between men and women in the synagogue? There's no basis for the, separate, uh, the difference is, is comes from the idea that we are when we are coming to the synagogue, we the, the main idea is to pray, and from the nature of the human being, when a man and a woman stands one 
close to another, it makes, you know, the, the mindset will be on the prayer will be all different. Now, Karai prayer involves we should be protected. Uh, bowing down, I used to suffer because of that I don't want to think how it will look if a woman be in front of a man and she will do something like this. You know, his mind won't be in the prayer. So this is the reason why they are different. But it's not so very sorcerer. I have never seen this special. No, this besides the idea that I told you from the idea of the sinar, yes, there is no difference between the two aspects. Uh, going back to the service we attended tonight, yes. is it more like Mincha or like Arvit or? Karait have only two prayers a day, yes. morning and evening. Yes. So, so what is it? Is it Mincha or Arvit? No. Arvit. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have three, we have only two. And, uh, It's a question to be. Yeah. The Ben Harbaya. You can't feel a big Okay, so we have only two prayers a day. Okay, so Philadelphia, it's a. When can you start saying the, this prayer that we just had? When can you start saying. After sunset. After sunset. Yes, because it's a new day. Because if you will start to pray before, now we mention Wednesday. Yes. Even though, according to the formal clock, if you will look, you are only in Tuesday. But you are waiting for the sunset, and then it becomes Wednesday. It's kind of when he read the parts from the yeah. Genesis. Yes? Each day is mentioned the part of the day. So it's, yes. so, so it's not oh, yes, based on Yes, it's based on the Korbanot. It's based on the Korbanot. No, you read, you read it. But the Korbanot it's will be, the will be in, the, in, the, in the morning in Ben Harbaya. Yes. 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 But, 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 he's, but this is in the night. And if, if it's that's when he starts. Yes. There are two differences when the prayers, of course, are related to the sacrifices. But there are, uh, two, there are sacrifices that you have to do which are two in the day, in the morning and in the afternoon, in the afternoon. And, and beneath, between them, you can do as many prayers as you wish. Someone can pray seven times a day, like David says in Psalm, seven times in a day, I glory you God, and whatever he wished to. But so this is sort of volunteer prayer or sacrifice that you do. It's not obligated to pray. But I'm, try, I'm trying to understand what the biblical basis is. It's because if it's the Corban note, then it's it's both and Bain Harbai. And Bain Harbai is from the is the afternoon. And you're saying it's no, the it's not the afternoon. No, it's not the afternoon, afternoon. Bain Harbai. No, the day is split to three, and the evening is split to three. Bain Harbai is between the nights. Now there is the long discussion regarding to it. You wish to carry. I have a new question for you. But. Uh, it's you ask and I just answer. Yes. So, no, so I won't ask you about halakha. We leave halakha for it. I want to know what uh, the average week in the life of the chief Tara rabbi is. What, tell, me, tell us what you do. You have a wedding, you have a bar mitzvah. So what do you have? <laughs> you visit your community. First of all, I'm only one year and one oh. month, a certain month in my job as a review. <laughs> yes, so uh, there are a lot of issues inside the community, if it's a personal issues, if it's a, and because we have 10 different centers, so each center with his issues, if it's a, if it's a budget issues in front of the government, if it's uh, religious issues, like we had a few months ago that we were sued because we are uh, our butchery in uh, Ramle selling meat. Mm -hmm. So now we had a call that everything which is related to the all these issues are running all the day. So there are classes that I give and forms and questions and answers and everything it's uh, it's too mixed in order that I can give you a split plain explanation. When do you give classes? Here or what? everywhere? When do you give classes? Where well, I specifically? Yes. I specifically give us uh, classes in uh, Moshav Hanen, which is uh, when we visit tomorrow. And from time to time, I'm teaching in the in Ramle, in the center, uh, when we are we are having a, a 
Chug, I would say, Chug or uh, Yeshiva for the new Karite rabbis. Uh, three years already this project is running, and I'm teaching a few parts and just focus with the thing. Uh, yes, so, yes, sort of, yes. Something like this. From a budget problem, we are a little bit minimizing the times in the week that it happens, but yes. Yes, yes. The, the, the local group is running all three. That they are learning in a specific plan that what's it happening with built built together according to the old books like the uh, Eliyahu. Specific. I'll mention what you need to learn in order to fulfill the duty of a rabbi. In order to uh, be a rabbi, you need to learn so and so books and be able to do so and so and so. And this is what we are doing. I might talk about a few months, half a year ago, the idea of uh, the insects, what uh, uh, David spoke about. It's very complicated part and very good, interesting issue. Uh, and other parts in the, in the plan as well. Okay. Yes. You could mention you also work full time at the university. And are also a student in our department. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm working full-time job as system engineer in the computer science department here in Ben Gurion. And I'm a PhD student of Professor Lasker as well. And I'm working on my thesis now. So and what's your secret? We also want to do everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know the secrets. It's so sweet. <laughs> there is no secrets. I'm sure that you are much... Uh, busy, uh, at least like me, even not more, even more. Yes. Yes. Um, do you have any contacts with the Eastern European Karaites? Uh, yes, of course. We uh, months ago I had the vi we had here a visit of uh, David Rack from uh, Lithuania. Huh? I think he came here. We had a meeting. Uh, we working on the idea of uh, improving the content, the co uh, connection between us. We are working on a plan to switch uh, uh, youngest people between the two communities. There is a there, there is the language barrier because only uh, if I will I think that only two or three in Karite knows Russians or uh, Slavic languages, and they do not know English. So it, if they knew English, it was ten times easier to make the connection. But we are working on a plan in order to solve the problems that we are facing. Yes? Is there any symbolic value in uh, the color of a kippah? I see that the uh, youngsters uh, wear white color, all the youngsters and uh, other people uh, wear either uh, black color uh, white uh, no, there is no connection between the type of the kippah or the color. You can use whatever covering your head you wish. You can come with a hat, you can come with a kippah, you can come with a, a plain kippah, brown kippah, white kippah. There is no, as you saw, there is no difference. There is no specific clothes to car right. You can wear whatever you want as long as it's, it's uh, modest and clean. There is no problem whatever you will wish to uh, sorry, wear or a... Uh, Right. Okay. Another question. When I attended the service in the Crimea, I spotted that uh, people after, servi after the service don't uh, turn back to the altar. They retreat yes. with face uh, the Torah. So, uh, do anybody of you uh, remember such a tradition? Yes. Me, we are so doing the they just. Yes, so don't show you don't show your back to the to the to the hechal. This is the the, the main custom, yes. yes. This is things that which you usually don't are much more uh, familiar with the with the custom, but the others are still you know get, need to get used to the idea. Yes, you uh, you prostrate. Yes. Yes. Would you think this what happens in Eastern Europe as well in the service? Uh, um, the does it. Not all of them, there, there is a different communities. As, as, at least as I know. Yes. Uh, the last question. Yes. Do you have any specific place uh, within the synagogue for the mourners? 
the models? Yeah. This is very interesting question because um, you need to distinguish, or we at least distinguish, between the idea of someone who is mona and someone who is unpure from being with a dead person or touch a, a, a dead person, which means someone can be mourner because he, one of his relatives has passed away and there is no problem with it uh, generally uh, with the idea that he's under seven days of mourner, yes, to come to the same and pray uh, and there was no supposed to be a specific place, even though generally the, the custom is that he sits in the back, which means you, it's a symbolic idea that as much you are close to the Chal, you are much more uh, pure or happy. Now, you cannot be mourning and a happy person on the same time, so this is generally. Now, the complicity comes with the idea that if someone is mourning and at the same time he is impure because he was under the same roof with it, that person or touch a dead person. Now, here comes a very complicated point, because the custom is that you need to pray in the house of the person who passed away. Now, usually uh, the families are big and the houses are small. And when you are, have a lot of other people that come to pray, practically you cannot do so. And now the person is in a very emotional, compl complicated uh, situation and you wish to come to pray. Now, there is a problem what you are doing. So after a lot of discussions in here in the in the West Hall, I got into to this and learning from the books uh, and studying the Bible uh, and the Torah specifically very deep, you find that someone which is a unpure from a dead situation, he he is only making someone impure only if he touch him. But when he sits, doesn't make the place impure. This is a very, very delicate point in the halacha that you need to understand, but the idea is that we are leading them to sit in the back. As you saw here, there is, when you enter the synagogue, there is a square like this, which is in the back of the synagogue. So persons who are under this situation, or didn't fulfill the part of the purity, can sit there, because it's uh, uh, taking as, as idea as a place which is for those who are not fully impure. Okay. Do you have in your uh, community people who do not observe the mitzvot? And if yes, what, 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 does, what does it mean to be a Karaite Hiloni? <laughs> <laughs> this is a question which rises almost in every group, in every age, from any tribe that comes here. I don't know why, but people think that if you are a Karaite, you must be religious. So, no, it's the same like the Rabbanite branch, exactly the same. There are uh, those who are uh, uh, secular, there are those who are Masawati, and there are those who are religious. Now, Still identified as Karaz. Yes, and the, whole, the, and the synagogue is open to everyone, and if he decides that uh, on Wednesday he wishes to come to pray, so the, the synagogue is open, he, we are welcoming him and, and with no problem. And he doesn't care, again, because he is responsible to his own deeds. I, I, I won't judge him if he decides to come one Shabbat in a month or once, once in, a, in his life to the synagogue. I'm very happy to accept anyone that wish to come and pray in the synagogue. Okay? So this is based, of course I will try to you know, convince him and to, to make him close and uh, whatever I can, but... What he decides to do, this is his own, and I respect his will, as he chose to do so. Chose to do so. Yes. How do you become pure again? So something like mikveh. Oh, okay. What's a mikveh? Okay. In Karai, there is no mikveh the, the idea is, is written in the Torah, Verachatz, which means he washed himself. What we are declaring today. Uh, Taking a shower? Taking a shower, yes, exactly. This is the best word that you can, uh, I can choose. Taking a shower because when you are showering, the water is cleaning your impurity from your body and this goes out to the shower and that's it. 
The idea is that when you are in a mikveh, and if I'm impure and I'm entering a mikveh and I brought out an impure, so the impurity stays in the mikveh. And someone that comes after me is entering to the same impurity and there is no purity from the situation. Now, so in the most cases that are mentioned in life of the impurity cases, if you ate or touch or such a thing, you are need to uh, make it, taking a shower before sunset, and it depends on the on the case. But let's let's give the best condition: switch clothes, which means you wash your old clothes and take a new clothes, which are clean completely. And after sunset, you are pure again. This is for one day or a light impurity situation. If it's like a woman in her cycle, so of course she's not becoming pure on the first day. She need to wait seven days. Not like the rabbinites where that she's come seven days after the days of the blood. She's here pure after uh, seven days if the blood flow stops before the uh, ending of the seven days. And there is, on this point, there is a very interesting book that I uh, just got a few days ago uh, from a, a rabbinite a, a woman, woman doctor. Genevist, that uh, the name Lachzir Tahara Yoshna, this is the name of the book, which Dr. Ozdek, exactly. He published a very, very interesting book which includes uh, uh, medical aspects and halachatic uh, aspects related to the book. And he says, oh, we need to go back to the idea of the seven days in the tour because a lot of couples cannot get, have a babies because the woman uh, period is mixed with the, I don't want to get to all the, uh, yeah, you are not familiar with this issue. So the, the Karaite way is that besides the seven days of a woman or someone which is a Zav or something like this, he is washing, taking a shower before sunset, switching clothes, and after sunset he's pure again. Okay? According to the Torah. Okay. What about animal purity? For instance, if you have a dog. You can have a dog, uh, but there is a little point that someone which have a dog need to take care. Which means, if we look, we both look, if we look good, uh, look good on the Bible, we see that animals, a live animal, which doesn't care if it's a pig or dog or a bird or a fly, as long as it's alive, he's not making you impure. Okay, I can touch a pig, it doesn't make me impure. This is plain text from the Torah. Now, the problem starts if you have a dog, and the dog ran outside and uh, smashed his face or his uh, feather on a dead animal, like a dead cat, let's say, which is, if someone has a dog, he knows that they are very really like to do so. So, here is the problem, which you, if, if, if he smashes himself on a dead animal, and you touch the dog, so the impurity comes to you. Let's take the case that you have a very, very nice dog which you don't let him go out from, the, from your house or a cat, for instance. There is no problem with it. You just need to, again, take... But in any case, the custom, which is kept almost like a commandment in the Karait community, and even in the most secular families, is that you are taking a shower and switching your clothes before you come into a city. So, in order to eliminate all Abilities that you have might been doing something which is you don't know. Okay. <laughs>